there, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be comparing some of the major serialized fiction platforms out there online. Some of these have really good options for monetization, but even if that's not the route you want to go, there are definitely some options as well. It's essential with any endeavor that you know what you're getting into beforehand, so hopefully this video gives you the information as up to date as possible so that you feel more informed about the choices ahead of you as a publisher or an author. If you're new to the channel or new to passive income, then welcome. My name is Sarah, and this is I Publish Ghostwriters. On this channel, we're here to help you create passive income that works for you, especially when it comes to online publishing. We've published hundreds of books in dozens of different languages on Amazon KDP, Ingram Spark, Audible, and tons more. The content we create is to help you do the same thing and achieve the sort of financial freedom that passive income can bring. As always, if you like this video or you want to see more like it, go ahead and leave a like down below so that we can provide you with the kind of content that you want to see. And if you want more videos like this or on passive income, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a single video. We're always trying new things so that we can bring you the best tips, tricks, and tutorials. So you're going to want to stay dialed in. Okay. So first off, for those who may have stumbled on this video first, we did make another video before on the pros and cons of serialized fiction on the whole. It's an option for both indie authors and publishers looking for a low cost investment or a way to build a following for your more significant published works. Each platform has its own audience and best practices, but today we're going to be taking a look at what each one brings to the table. If you're interested in hearing the pros and cons, I'm going to make sure that there's a card in the video so that you can go check that one out and hopefully that helps you make a decision whether or not this is for you. But with that, let's dive into the platforms we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so we're going to be starting off with Royal Road. If your writing leans heavily on lit RPG or science fiction, then the Royal Road audience might suit your needs. There's no official system within Royal Road to monetize, save for profiles linking to a Patreon or other off-platform monetization options. However, the community within Royal Road seems really friendly and encouraging. It's a bit more challenging to stand out on the platform because you have to get onto the trending board, which then first requires to be discovered. However, with a decent interface and an active community, this platform is really good if it is a new endeavor for you. If you're just getting started out and you feel like you are the target uh, demographic for the writing community on this, then this might be a fantastic option. So the next one we're going to be talking about is Web Novel. With a robust user interface, excellent reader app, easy featuring system, and a responsive community on Discord, you might be able to find great luck on the Chinese-based web novel platform. It has significant drawbacks that there is no immediate monetization option similar to Royal Road. Once you've published there, there are options to become a contracted writer and still get paid. However, it seems like the easiest way to monetize would be through platforms like Ko-fi or Patreon once you have a committed following on the platform. The genres that do well are often Eastern genres, however, the translated English romance novels seem to top the charts, so opportunities do exist no matter what your niche specifically is. Next up we have Tapas, which is another prevalent platform depending on what you are publishing. It has an easy to navigate interface, excellent reading app, straightforward monetization through their ink donation program. Um, getting featured is a little bit less straightforward and might take some figuring out. The editorial staff actually picks all the features, so unless you approach them, it might be difficult from the beginning. The most popular genres on Tapas are comics. Some of these cartoons on the platform have been traditionally published after being published here, so there are opportunities in that sphere. However, they recently expanded into serialized novels, and so many of the comics are, are also being written and are now available as written novels. The platform may take a little fine tuning to make it work before it becomes an, a steady stream of income. However, just 25 subscribers is what you need to unlock the monetization, so the bar is pretty low. So next we have Moonquill. Similar to some others on here, Moonquill allows you to monetize from the beginning with their ad system. The ad revenue comes from people reading your story, which can mean a stream of passive income over time as your accounts sit and the stories are already written. The creators seem committed to the platform and are responsive to bug fixes, which means that there is a pretty good chance of things staying up to date. There's a lot of crossover with web novel and it works similarly as a reader in terms of interface. As far as drawbacks go, Moonquill is similar to Kindle Vela. The audience may be smaller than other platforms, so producing an audience from nothing may take some work and there's less organic traffic. Cross-posting your stories on multiple platforms will primarily circumvent this trouble. So the next one on the list today is going to be Medium. 
Medium has a robust readership that has recently expanded into a subscriber model, which makes it an excellent option for people looking for low-cost ways into serialized fiction. This is definitely has more of an audience on Medium for articles and blog posts. However, since it's such a popular platform, you're going to have plenty of low-cost options to use it as a way to break into serialized fiction. Using their subscriber tools can help you monetize, or you can direct your readers to a Patreon or a Ko-fi for tipping and other forms of patronage. In terms of interface, Medium is dead simple to post on and has a reader app that directs straight into a story reading. So next we have Radish. Radish is admittedly a little bit more complicated than some of the other platforms that we've talked about today. This means a couple things, but first off, the prospective author must first apply for a spot with an application form. It asks for a name, email, short blurb, pen name, and then you're going to choose a story you're going to choose the categories that you might want to submit the stories to. You have to then submit a 30 page pitch, which will then go through a review process, offer a summary and other platforms for writing samples. Once accepted, the writer is encouraged to be regularly posting 1000 to 2000 word episodes with a pricing model. The royalty plans are hard to find, but many payments are ballparked when you go looking. It may be appealing to have a larger reader base and a popular iOS app at your disposal. However, Radish's main drawback seems to be the lack of transparency within the platform and how writers are actually paid. Whether they're paid on time has seemed to be a point of contention with some of the writers on there. There have been issues with censorship um, and not being able to edit a story once you've submitted it and had it approved. So your best bet is to have the works edited and vetted thoroughly, which may not be an easy or inexpensive endeavor. So next we have Dream, which is another platform you have the option to publish on, but has a lot of the same issues as Radish with a lack of transparency. Some of the contracts are exclusive, meaning you can only publish your chosen story on Dream, which can limit your opportunities down the line. Not only that, but there are issues with payment after the initial advance. In fact, many on the platform have advised against using it. Next up, we have Wattpad. Wattpad is arguably the largest and most pervasive of all of these sites. Several promising publishing careers were launched through Wattpad, with some novels getting more contracts or being traditionally published. There are it, There is a steady focus on getting reader-to-writer interaction going. It seems that the stories with heavier engagement will be more easily featured or climb within their genre ranks. Still, the real drawbacks come from the platform itself. Readers seem steady, which is the primary concern you have when regarding bad interface. It should be fine if that's not an issue, though navigating tags and genre classifications can be difficult. There is a paid feature similar to other platforms utilizing coin packages and paying per story. Next, and one of the newer ones, is going to be Kindle Vela. Kindle Vela is a platform that Amazon has newly launched, similar to Wattpad or other monetized platforms of the same vein. Through the use of their Kindle iOS app or Amazon website, Kindle Vela allows readers to read short-form serialized stories. Each reader will be free to read the first couple chapters of any given story, but then subsequent chapters are going to be purchased through the use of tokens or coin. Kindle Vela allows authors to move from Amazon KDP onto the Vela platform by going onto their Kindle Vela library, uploading story title, pen name, brief description, and image, categories, and story tags. Authors can earn up to 50% royalties for what readers spend on the tokens. Kindle Vela has a lot less competition for now, but is only available to U.S. authors and readers and may be limited to iOS readers for the time being. The monetization system seems really well integrated, but the readership might be kind of low because you're getting it on the ground floor. Now the last one on the list today, I have mentioned a couple times throughout, and you can absolutely use this one in junction with any other platform, but we have Patreon. And if you're looking to skip the third party platforms, and have a way to advertise your work outside of the platform, then Patreon is another option you might be interested in. You might be missing out on feature options and indirect traffic of other platforms, but Patreon allows you to skip some of the, um, the in-between and get directly to your readers. If you provide your works regularly, you can start a Patreon for your audience to have full access to it. Many creators and content makers use Patreon and will actually earn a full-time income from the website alone. The downsides are that you are in the driver's seat, similar to indie publishing. You're only going to be as successful as you work to be. This is not a passive income and should not be approached as such. However, having a direct community for feedback might be encouraging and foster a comfortable space of fandom for your works, which can absolutely help you get published if you decide to down the line. 
In the end, getting into serialized fiction can be an excellent step for any new author looking to build a readership. Many writers on these platforms can find great success through traditional or independent publishing, even after their books have been accessible online, sometimes even for free. In particular, writers on Wattpad report that they often have a loyal readership who will still buy their books once they publish them. In some cases, like Anna Todd of Afterfame, they can get their original stories published and go on to get movie deals. Depending on your desired monetization scheme, if that's something you want, your current audience, and your ability to push out short-form episodes on a regular schedule, each of these platforms offers something different and it's worth looking into for someone. Now, that's going to be all for today. If you liked this video or learned something, make sure you let us know by leaving a like down below. If you want more information on the pros and cons of serialized fiction, we did release another video on the topic. If you'd like a more in-depth look into a specific platform, whether we mention it here today or not, let us know in the comments, as well as if you have a perspective on any of these yourself. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe with post notifications turned on, that way you never miss a single video on the channel. This has been iPublished Ghostwriters, and I will see you next time.